Hey everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about CPTSD again and clarifying my experience and my view on the best way to use psychedelics to address CPTSD. So for anyone who's new to the channel really quick, I saw that there's a bunch of new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the dialogue we're having here. Welcome to the community. Really honored to have you aboard for the conversation as it just starts to lift off the ground here. So, uh, a couple quick things. So I've realized I've been kind of self-reflecting and realizing that I've gotten way behind on getting content out to you guys and that uh, I really have a bunch to say and I have not been sharing and I've not been saying with you. So my apologies. This is the beginning of a bunch of videos I hope to bang out today and kind of just get content to you. So that's what's up. That's what's going on here. And uh, I wanted to clarify this stance on CPTSD because I got a great question from one of the viewers here where she and I had had a little bit of a dialogue in the comments section. She asked a great question and I figured it would be better to just like do it on video so that's a resource for everybody here. So anybody who's interested in this topic, now uh, there's more clarification on my perspective and my personal experience with this. Uh, also, I just wanna acknowledge really quick that I'm a new YouTuber and I'm a new coach. So I'm a little uh, under-organized, shall we say, in terms of the clarity of my message, what it is I'm trying to get across to you, and uh, how to make it make the most sense in the shortest amount of words. So uh, I'm doing my best here to try to bring you the clearest articulation of all the stuff I've learned, which quite frankly is 20 years worth of going deep with psychedelics, spirituality, self-development work, uh, you know, NLP, hypnosis, like th for years and years and years now. Um, so there's a lot I've learned and my task now is to try and make that all make a lot of sense for you guys. Uh, last thing I want to acknowledge here before we dive in is that I'm still new to camera. I'm still, you know, I've worked through a lot of my social anxiety, but I still get a little bit of anxiety when it comes to being on camera. And uh, so that can translate to me sometimes not being fully present and relaxed while I'm talking. And so uh, because of that, I think that's part of the reason because I haven't been scripting my videos, why some of the videos may not be as clear and coherent as uh, might be useful for you guys. So this is me kind of going back over, conversing with you as a community, answering Alara in specific, and uh, trying to just clarify what it is that I'm offering, what it, what it is I'm up to here, what it is I'm saying about psychedelics and personal healing, personal growth from my own vantage point. So that's the ramble. Let's go ahead and get into the content here. So I believe it was yesterday, might have been two days ago now, Alara hit me with a question. Uh, we kind of had a little back and forth in the comment section, which I thought was awesome and constructive conversation. Thank you, Alara, for these questions and, and engagement. I really appreciate it. And uh, she asked a question that kind of just reminded me that I have not been clear. So uh, I'll read the question to you guys and then I'll give you my answer here. So she, what she asked was, okay, so in your opinion, would you have more luck for CPTSD healing if you went the microdosing route more regularly or a larger dose more rarely? Have you tried microdosing for this? Excellent question. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there wondering the same thing. So this is really useful. And, uh, and I'm just, I'm grateful you're asking because I want to give my personal experience. So uh, I'm going to kind of give a little bit of context around this before I answer it. But the short answer, you know, the TLDR, if you will, if you want to turn off the video now, is that um, I think either can work. I think the difference that makes the difference is what are you doing in terms of therapeutic, you know, interventions along with the psychedelics. So that's kind of my answer. So if you want to turn it off now, now you've got the answer. So if now you want the explanation, you want the story behind it, let me explain a little bit. So uh, <clears throat> my journey, and I'll do this in another video in more depth, with psychedelics and CPTSD started in the early 90s. I've been taking psychedelics since the early 90s. And um, back then, I was interested in them, in them more for novelty, more for, you know, kind of the romance, like a lot of people get into it, kind of this, you know, resonance with the 60s and hippie culture and just the strangeness of it. It was fascinating to me. So uh, that was part of why I sought it out. What I didn't realize and what we didn't have a language for at that time is that I was dealing with some CPTSD already and didn't know it. Uh, and really, you know, I've been taking, you know, I've had hundreds of experiences with psychedelics, most of those high dose, macro dose experiences over, you know, since the early 90s, so almost 30 years at this point. 
Uh, and I've done them, you know, in festival settings, concert settings, group settings, intentional settings, ceremonies, uh, personally, you know, solo work, uh, you name it, right? Therapeutic work. So in my experience, what I found was that, you know, especially in those first 10 years, I was trying to do psychedelics a lot to try to um, get back to these states that I would experience on psychedelics that were these breakthrough moments that were really the falling away of my CPTSD. So, you know, I would have these, these macrodose experiences where I would maybe I'd touch that experience of being pure and free as a child again, or maybe I'd, you know, have some like union with God and a mystical oneness, like an ego death experience. And I would feel completely liberated from all fear and all worry and all suffering and all, you know, trauma and drama. Or I would, you know, maybe have a breakthrough where I have like a, a profound sense of strength and like this wellspring of like clarity and commitment to my path and understanding of who I was meant to be and what my purpose was here on earth and these kinds of powerful experiences, right? And uh, what I would find is I'd have these macrodose experiences and I would, you know, may, maybe even have an out of body experience and I would calm down and within a day or two later, I would be back to the same sort of uh, same sort of experience I was having before. You know, within a few days, I'd be back to emotional flashbacks, dissociation, fight or flight, uh, you name it. Your your basic CPTSD kind of responses, because there were issues in my life that I wasn't addressing, that I didn't know how to address, and even know what the questions were or why. You know, I didn't have the language of CPTSD as a diagnosis to understand. But also, and this is the thing I want to make clear to you guys, uh, what cures and what heals is not the psychedelic. Uh, what cures and heals is the rewriting of a neural path. So uh, basically what happens, like for any issue we're experiencing, right, is we have some sort of a stimulus, whether it's an external thing that happens or an internal thought that we think that creates some sort of a stress. And that, that will send us through a series of internal processes that ends up at the CPTSD kind of response, if you will. So that might be something like, I see something that triggers me, or I see something that reminds me of a problem that I haven't figured out yet. And then I go through maybe a visualization internally, and that leads to some sort of self-talk, and that leads towards maybe a kinesthetic kind of body sensation response. Maybe that leads to even more self-talk, et cetera, et cetera. And the output of these internal processes along the way uh, that is part of this whole neural circuit is that you end up at the experience or the state or the behavior that you don't want to experience. So whether that's social anxiety, general anxiety, depression, uh, a phobia, um, I'm trying to think of what I've helped people with, stuff like this, right? You end up at these kinds of uh, states that you don't want to experience through this unconscious series of processes in between. So when we take a psychedelic and we have like a big macro dose experience where we go out of body and we transcend and you merge with Godhead and you, you know, talk with infinite jesters or whatever it is for you, you get wisdom from a spirit animal, whatever. Then you come back down. So you're outside of that pattern. Neurologically, your brain is firing in all these new ways. Crosstalk is happening amongst regions of the brain that don't normally crosstalk, allowing for all kinds of new patterns of understanding and connections and associating things you hadn't thought of before, like aha moments, right? All that kind of stuff. And then what happens is you have these, you know, these resource experiences, we call them, where you touch this beautiful part of yourself or you're empowered in some way and, and you have the solution, right? And then you come back down and then your brain inevitably is going to go back to that same set of neural paths and, and that same set of internal sequences in response to life that it used to do. Because, you know, from your brain's point of view, that's continuity, that's stability. That's what gives you survival and strength is that your brain is robust enough to remember how to do the same process over and over and over in response to whatever stimulus you're dealing with in life, right? So you come back down and what's going to happen is for a lot of people, that resource experience, that big, beautiful experience is just going to go away. It's just going to fade away because it's not being plugged into anything. And so it becomes just like a memory and like a thing you went through, you know, just like having a good day at an amusement park or whatever. It's a thing that happened that was great, but it just goes away. And what's going to come back online is that same old set of thought processes. 
So the work that I do and the work that I, I want to teach you and that I've found to be most healing and most restorative for me is to learn how to interrupt, to like create like a roadblock in that process of those that series of internal things that's happening, rewrite those, re, you know, redesign it basically. And then you don't end up at that same state. You end up at like a different place, which is wherever you want to go. So basically, if you're, you know, what I'm trying to say here is like from a macrodose perspective, if you're having these big resource states and then you're not applying those to rewrite this, this kind of neural path, you're not necessarily going to have any change. From a microdose perspective, essentially, it's the same thing. So have I microdosed for CPTSD? Yes. So for me, I discovered CPTSD and, and this kind of this language of symptomology in 2016. And I was going through a rough patch in my life at that time. And uh, I found that this gave me a profound sense of clarity about what it is I'd been experiencing because for me, uh, I tend to freeze a lot. So uh, I would go through these rough you know, life situations where I didn't have answers, I didn't have solutions, and I didn't know how to find the solutions or the answers. And uh, I didn't know some of the things that I know now about hypnosis and NLP, even though I was, I was already educated and already working a bit as a coach. But I, there were things I didn't know at the time. And I would go through these moments of trigger and then dissociation over and over and over. And that became a loop that I lived a large chunk of my life inside of for decades. And it sucked. I'll talk more about that in another video too. Anyways, uh, so yeah, so I got to start to understand it, but I would still have that same experience. So I started to microdose because microdosing was also becoming kind of in vogue and more in the kind of the public conversation around that time. And so I started to microdose and started to work on both on, you know, what I would do is I'd microdose and I'd use that as a kind of tool for more self-inquiry to start to look at myself more closely, start to understand and try to like identify what are the roots of this pattern? Where did this first come up in my life? You know, what, ex you know, kind of adverse events that I've been through might have created this kind of reaction or where did my brain learn that it was safer to react in this way than that way, that kind of stuff, right? But I didn't necessarily know how to utilize the answers that I was getting. So I was doing microdosing for CPTSD, but it wasn't calming the symptoms in my experience. So what I did do is I just used that to kind of feed me more wisdom, but more insight and more knowledge about your issues, which is this is most of the psychological field. This is a whole other video I could do about like the, the reality of the field of psychology and where we're at right now and efficacy and how many people actually get results and you know how many of these ideas you know actually work and how many are actually real and valid versus just possible theories there's that's a whole conversation to have but long story short i got more insight and more knowledge from my microdosing for cptsd but i did not get change and so uh Here's, again, circling back to the answer. I know I already gave it, but here it is again. What do I think is better? I think either works if you're combining it with these therapeutic processes that I want to teach you and show you or, you know, even more clearly, because honestly, a lot of this stuff is hard to do solo from the inside. It takes a lot of self-awareness and a lot of clarity. Like that's one of the strengths I had going into this is from those, you know, decades of psychedelics. I had a lot of self-awareness. I had a lot of self-clarity. It's kind of a strong point of mine. And it's something that also culturally, I was around a lot of healers and a lot of, you know, therapists and a lot of, you know, kind of light workers and, and very spiritual people that were very self-aware on their own paths. So I learned how to be self-aware a long time ago. Because of that, it made it much easier for me to do this work on myself. But, um, yeah, so the point being, if you need help with this, this is something you might want to come to me or someone else who's skilled with this kind of stuff. Frankly, I don't know anyone else approaching psychedelics from this angle, uh, which is crazy to me. That's a whole other story. Uh, so yeah, yes, the, what is curative here, what's healing here is the interrupting and the rewiring of the neural path, not the psychedelic. In my experience, knowing hundreds and hundreds of people who use psychedelics all the time, I know a lot of them still have mental health struggles. 
I know I did for decades, even though I'd done tons of high doses, I'd had ego death experiences, I'd had, I had a spiritual practice in place already. Uh, and so my experience, macro or micro, is that no psychedelics alone won't fix it. And I know that's a bummer for a lot of new people who are coming to the psychedelic you know, field kind of freshly in the last couple of years who are excited about it because they've heard and seen all the new science and they've seen kind of how safe it actually is and they're feeling optimistic. And there's a lot of this kind of mis mis uh, misunderstanding, misconstruing that psychedelics are supposed to just be this panacea that we just eat them like meds and all of a sudden we feel better and problems go away. It's not how it works. They are therapeutics. They are there to loosen up the issue so that it comes to the surface. They're there to help you with self-awareness and getting outside your kind of narrow window of self-perception so that you can really look at yourself and go, oh, whoa, never thought about that before. Good point. You know, They're there for that kind of a thing. They're there for a therapeutic kind of acceleration so that if you're using a therapeutic tool or technique, you can start to get at what needs changing whether that is you know, solving a problem, whether that's learning how to forgive, whether that is going into therapy, understanding now more about your issue, whatever it is, right? So uh, I'm rambling because I'm passionate, but uh, yeah, basically psychedelics in and of themselves, in my experience from blow, blowout experiences and ayahuasca and ceremonies and all that, no. From all the people I've seen who have taken psychedelics, you know, uh, religiously, you know, as part of their lifestyle for years, you know, I was part of a whole rave dance community of people doing plenty of psychedelics, and most of them had anxiety and depression issues, or, you know, self image issues, self esteem issues, uh, you know, money issues, motivation issues, all the stuff that people struggle with in day to day life, right? So, do psychedelics in and of themselves heal? No. If you combine them with some sort of a therapeutic te technique, and I'm a huge fan of this, uh, what's called memory reconsolidation or coherence therapy, it's kind of the foundation in combination with other approaches like NLP, self-hypnosis, IFS, this kind of stuff. Uh, all of that together, yes. But what's really doing the work is the therapy and the interventions. The psychedelics, have two ways of helping. So let me explain that, make it more clear to you really quick. So I've identified two ways that we can combine these kind of self-directed therapeutic approaches because a lot of these therapies that I'm teaching and that I wanna talk about are things you can do for yourself or that you can do with a coach like myself. So there are two approaches. The first one is microdosing and then actively doing these processes to kind of interrupt that neural path, kind of put a roadblock there and rewire the brain, right? So that's how I healed and got over my uh, my social anxiety, right? So that first video that a lot of you have seen that kind of brought, brought a lot of you to this channel, that's what I did. I would microdose, you know, three times a week. I would go, I'd spend 20 minutes kind of right as I was coming up and feeling kind of that openness and that fluidity in my brain. And I would think about whatever was triggering me with social anxiety. And I would do some of these techniques Sure enough, it, boom, it cleared it really quick. But it was the techniques that did the work. The uh, microdose just kind of made my brain more neuroplastic and more, more open to changing more quickly, basically. The other approach, the second approach, is large dose uh, you know, or, or moderate dose, like a full dose experience, whatever that is for you. Uh, kind of going into it kind of open-ended, seeing what kind of really positive you know, mind states emotional states, wisdom, insights, whatever. So what huge, big resource states have you experienced? Uh, and then taking those with you after the session, right? Letting yourself go through your trip, calm down, rest, relax, nourish. Next day, next couple days, next week afterwards, will you have that kind of window of increased neuroplasticity? Same thing. Take these large resource states, use them as a tool to interrupt that neural path. Again, doing this kind of work. And then that can really be a powerful way to use kind of joy and bliss and ecstasy and inner wisdom, you know, plugged back into your life to unwire these problems. So those are the two ways that I found really, really, really work well. Uh, so I hope that makes clear, clearer sense to you. Um, and, and I just want to kind of like tag on here because I keep forgetting to say in this video so far. What what really does the trick is 
again, the, these therapeutic techniques. So what I want to teach you and what I want to show you, these are techniques you can use when you're sober too. They work all the time. These are just straight up effective therapeutic techniques. But when you combine them with that neuroplasticity, it's just a whole another level. It's just easier. It happens faster. It works better in my experience. That's what works. So which one works better for CPTSD, microdosing, macrodosing? Uh, in my experience, um, if you're doing the, the, the techniques here, so if you're doing either the integration work afterwards or you're microdosing and doing you know, work while you're microdosing, uh, either works. It's really about preference. What do you like better? You know, do you like to microdose and you know, do some self-therapy a few times a week? Or do you like to like have a big, profound experience and then do some integration work afterwards and really learn how to apply that to the problem areas of your life? Both work, and there's nothing that oops, there's nothing that says you can't do both, right? So that's the answer to your question, uh, as far as I'm concerned. What I want to offer you guys is a set of tools, a set of techniques to start to interrupt your anxiety, your depression, your procrastination, whatever the issue is that you're working on, and and really start to develop out this path. Um, there's there's more I want to say about this, but this is what I'm offering you. So this is what I found works for me. Um, I think there's a lot out there in terms of psychology and understanding your issues that's really valuable. In my experience, knowing more hasn't necessarily changed things though. And this is one of the kind of the, the weak spots for me with the field of psychology is that a lot of these therapists you know, are great at talking about the content of the issues. They're, they're not so clear about what it takes to create the change unless they're educated and stuff too. So, um, yeah, so I hope that makes sense, Alara. Thank you so much for the question. It's really a pleasure to be able to doing Q&A with you guys. So if anyone else has questions, hit me in the comment section. I'm happy to talk about it. But just to clarify really quick, which is better, either are good. Uh, sober is good too, if you know some techniques and some therapeutic interventions that can help. Without uh, yes, you will have a vacation. You'll have a break from your trauma, from your stress, from your issues, but it's not necessarily going to fix it. In my experience, you might be different. You might know someone who's different. Um, I do think that there's a case to be made for people who, you know, uh, let's see, uh, let's say all they needed was to step outside that narrow tunnel of their own kind of subjective experience for a moment and look at it from another perspective. And they go, oh, I get it. And that's enough to help them kind of burst the bubble of whatever the tr the issue was or you know the trauma was, and they're able to go, okay, I'm good, I get it. Just don't think that thing or don't feel that thing or don't operate in that way. And I've seen that happen too, but I think that's rarer, and I think that those are generally kind of less severe cases. Um, the other thing that happens a lot is people get outside the, the trauma or the experience, and and then they spiritually bypass. They uh, go, well, I don't want to go back into that shit. I'm just going to pretend like it's not there and just be this angelic, perfect person. And they just kind of like try to like act like it's not real. And it's just, you know, they can choose their own reality. And, you know, the, the subconscious processes and the, and the thought patterns that are wired into the brain that the brain's always going to be doing uh, all of a sudden aren't there. Uh, in my experience, that's not true. So that's just spiritual bypassing. Anyways, uh, I hope that makes it clear. I'm going to be doing more videos for you guys. I'm banging them out today because uh, I have a lot to communicate and I appreciate you guys. So I hope this is interesting, inspiring, educational. I hope this is much clearer. Um, you can use either. I just encourage you, whether it's with me or you know through this channel or one-on-one -on -one coaching with me or with someone else. If you have another coach you like or another, uh, you know, if you have a methodology of personal transformation that you already know, use it along with the psychedelics. That's what's going to make the difference. All right. Big love to all. Thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far. And I've got more content on the way real soon because I'm about to record it right now. Okay. Bless.